Dean uh, celebrated his 87th birthday a week ago today. Happy birthday to Dean. Um, uh, and and uh, he's had a broadcasting career that has spanned more than five decades, and he, uh, which includes being known as the voice of Armed Forces Radio and serving as the public address announcer at the Tournament of Roses Parade. Uh, for his involvement in a local scene, Gene, the voice behind Dana Point's youth baseball games, was named 2013 Dana Point Citizen of the Year by the Dana Point Chamber of Commerce. Gene's also devoted to helping his fellow seniors at the Dana Point Community Center. He can be found most days helping pack meals, working the crowd, and leading activities at the center. And many of you may remember uh, meeting Gene or seeing him at our annual Thanksgiving luncheon that our Rotary Club does for our seniors. And... Uh, He's also named Ambassador of the Year and officially named the Voice of Dana Point in 2006. I'd like to make a nice warm welcome to our dear friend, Mr. Gene Burns. Please come up, Gene. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. What an honor this is. And I want to thank Ellen Wickstrom for this invitation here this morning. Alan has written something here I'm going to take back to the Senior Center for all of our volunteers. Alan has written, fun is the key to making the good we do just that much sweeter. And I think that is great. I'm going to repeat that just one more time. And uh, Alan, I do appreciate that. Well, today, this morning, with your invitation, I'd like to think that my father is looking down from above at this hour, and I'll explain why in just a few minutes. My wife reminded me the other day that I have been speaking into a microphone for 69 years. <laughs> you remember Linus and his blanket? This is my blanket. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was instructed by a wonderful priest, Father Owen De Silva, a Franciscan. And he said, in order to be an outstanding speaker, keep it brief, get to the point, and sit down. And I always tried to remember that. Incidentally, I'm going to adhere to those words uh, this morning, much to your relief, all right? Thank you. <laughs> now to get to the point, for the past decade, I've had the honor of picking up the microphone and saying, holiday greetings, seniors, from the Monarch Beach Sunrise Rotary Club. And your members then would serve a traditional Thanksgiving feast to over 150 of you. And all of us enjoyed a great occasion on each one of those years. And I'd like to point out that for several years, our mayor and Rotarian Lisa Bartlett was among those serving our group. Like many others, I have volunteered along the side of Vanna Murphy, whose steady hand has actually carried us through our daily lunch program at the Dana Point Community Center on Del Abispo. And we also conduct the popular Meals on Wheels program. Now this program is designed for those who were unable to leave their home to do any shopping. But please, bear in mind that food is but one of our goals. Our aim is to reach out to our group and make their lives a little bit brighter. Someone once said that it takes courage to be a senior. There are matters of health, of course. Missing a mate with whom you have spent most of your life. Loneliness can be your enemy. And your greatest joy is showing off pictures of your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Personally, I'm now in my 87th year, as Alan graciously pointed out here just a moment ago. 
I'm blessed with a loving wife and enjoying the best of two worlds, service to my fellow seniors and involved with our youth through the Dana Point Youth Baseball, where I announce as many games as possible. What's it like to be around these youngsters as senior? It is a real treat. They're such fine groups of young people, and their parents are wonderful. In many cases, they're both working during the day, and they come out to the ballpark in time to see their young one playing ball. And I'm glad to say that we have been given the full support of the city of Dana Point. Mike Kellerbrew is here today, I'm pleased to say, and he represents our city. Mike, thank you so much for doing that and for all that you do, Mike Kellerbrew. I've had the pleasure of serving our city in various events, such as the Festival of Wales, and was recently honored by the Chamber of Commerce with that Citizen of the Year Award. This is a highlight in my senior years, believe me. My wife and I picked Dana Point as our retirement home in 1986, looking back on careers that gave us a great deal of pleasure. Gladys spent 25 years with TWA, Trans World Airlines, while uh, I was engaged in radio and television as a freelance announcer. And uh, it was a pleasure for me, beginning in 1952, and then television followed in 1958. In those early days, we kept our cameras busy with auto sales, store openings, wrestling matches, dance contests, also interviews and primitive newscasts. For example, as a weatherman, I would stand beside a blackboard with chalk in hand, writing down the temperatures from around the nation. Compare that with what Dallas Rains is doing today. I marvel at what television is able to do. I really am. And I'm a great TV viewer, as is my wife. With the special satellite coverage today, special effects, it is greater than I ever imagined in my early years. My aim was to be a newscaster in Los Angeles, but those jobs are hard to come by, and the competition is fierce. And as a result, my wife, and a wonderful wife indeed, a TWA agent and manager and an understanding lady. She spent a good amount of time alone in our Hollywood apartment. Her husband, meanwhile, broadcast wherever there was an opening for an announcer and engineer. Phoenix, Tucson, Nogales, Arizona, Palm Springs, Santa Ana, Newport Beach, and periods of time in Los Angeles. The local Motel 6 became my second home, <laughs> except for an occasional weekend with my wife. I was pursuing a dream, and that went on for years, but it wasn't all sacrifice, believe me. Thanks to the fact that Glennis was an airline employee, being an airline employee, we enjoy travel privileges. Empty seats aboard the plane found Gladys and Jean aboard. We could spend days in Egypt, Peru, Europe, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, also Singapore, and of course Hawaii, and several trips a year to Pennsylvania to see Gladys's family. Come to think of it, it's no wonder I didn't get that job in Los Angeles. Gladys always had me aboard a plane somewhere. <laughs> Well, I didn't achieve my dream, of course. At least, we ended up in the home of our dreams in Dana Point, California. We know all about Dana Point and the advantages of living here. The ocean, the weather, this beautiful city, and our well-run government. My association with this area dates back to 1933. Our family was in Phoenix at that time, and uh, during a visit with our grandparents in Huntington Park, we spent the day along the coast. And uh, along the coast meant a visit to 
Dana Point, while in this sleepy little village, my father took a snapshot of the family in front of an historic sign. I checked with the historic club here in Los Angeles and this area as well, and we have determined that that sign was situated near what we now know as the, uh, the restaurant there. That beautiful restaurant that so many of you know as you ride up the hill. And uh, that photo was claimed by the Historic Society here in Dana Point. And it has served our city and I so appreciate seeing our family in front of that sign. Our mother saved that snapshot that was taken in front of the sign by our father. And it included our grandparents, mother, my younger brother who is now deceased, I'm sorry to say, yours truly. And there's also our mother right in the center of that picture. And down below, that little dog belonged to our grandparents. What were we doing here in Dana Point? Our grandparents were from Cornwall, England. And this area reminded them of their home in Cornwall. It was a great day, and we so enjoyed being here in this area. You may ask, well, Gene, what was Dana Point like in those days? To tell you the truth, my brother and I were so concerned about getting in the water and the ocean, we didn't take note of the town. But from time to time, I would revisit this area, and, uh, oh, Dana Point has changed so, and it is still changing, as you know. And it's a beautiful city. I'm sure we're all proud to be here in Nana Point. There's also something, a large part of my story today concerns my wife of 50 years. And I'd like to acknowledge her now. That is, you ready? Thank you. I mentioned that photograph of our group in front of the sign here in Dana Point. Every time Gladys looks at that, she'll say, Gene, you certainly had good-looking legs then. <laughs> we have a story in our family I'd like to conclude with today. It's something that we're very proud of and have repeated many times over the years. It concerns our father, Gene Burris, Sr. The year was 1907 when a 15-year-old German immigrant walked through Ellis Island and he settled in the West and his English was poor at best. But his first job was in a lumber mill in Flagstaff, Arizona and how he treasured that job and an opportunity to earn a living here in the USA. He became a citizen in the 20s he moved to Phoenix with his family in 1926, seizing an opportunity to partnership in a wood and paper box factory. The business prospered in spite of the fact that we had a coming depression. In 1935, he was invited to join the Rotary Club in Phoenix, Arizona. The pleasure and pride it gave him was apparent to his wife, his daughter, the three sons, and then came the event that brought tears to his eyes. In 1942, we were at war, and in spite of the fact that he was German-born, our father was elected president of the Phoenix Rotary Club. It was a wonderful gesture that he treasured till his death in 1960. This was my father, Gene Burris, Sr., and I have to thank you once again for our family. Thank you, Rotarians and Rotary International, for the opportunity it gave our father, who was rather shy, even though he was a businessman, he was rather shy. And I see an example here today of why Dad felt so at ease with the Rotary Club, how you get up and greet each other, hug each other, and have such a good time together. My father, enjoyed that, and it really brought out the best in him. Now that sign that I referred to a moment ago, I brought along a couple of copies here today, and I'd like to acknowledge 
that that is now on the bridge, in case you haven't seen it, and a young lady by the name of Lubica Salika, who now lives in Newport Beach, is responsible for the artwork on that sign. As I conclude today, the late Hall of Fame baseball player Jackie Robinson once said that a person's life can be measured by his effect on others. A person's life can be affected by what he proves every day in his association with his fellow man. Without a doubt, Rotary International can take pride in its achievements and its effect on the world in general. And I'm proud to salute you, you Rotarians, and Rotarians everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you for sharing your story about your father's involvement with Rotary. I know that was a very personal one. I didn't realize the uh, timing with the war.